Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, where there, that where there is hatred, we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Many years after being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, Joseph reveals himself to them. Now the second in command in Egypt, Joseph reassures his brothers that God had used their evil intentions for good to preserve life during a devastating famine, and Joseph forgives them. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 45, beginning at the third verse. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years, in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry! Go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Apostles' Creed, we speak of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, using the metaphor of a planted seed and the story of Adam, Paul preaches passionately about the mystery of following Christ's perfect life into eternity. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at the 35th verse. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are, so are those who are of dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. 
Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the imperishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on your cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to anyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expect nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not con be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once upon a time, two brothers who lived on adjoining farms fell into conflict. It was the first serious rift in 40 years of farming side by side. They had been sharing machinery, trading a labor and goods as needed without a hitch. And then the long collaboration fell apart. It began with a small misunderstanding, and it grew into a major difference, which exploded into a bitter exchange of words, followed by weeks of silence. One morning, there was a knock on the elder brother's door, and he opened it to find a man with a carpenter's toolbox. I am looking for a few days of work, he said. Perhaps you would have a few small jobs here and there. Could I help you? Yes, said the elder brother, I do have a job for you. Look across the creek at that farm. That is my neighbor. In fact, it's my younger brother and we don't get along. Last week he dug a wider passage of water into his farm, but he ended up creating a very wide creek in between our farms, and I'm sure he did it just to annoy me. I want you to build me something that, so that we don't have to stand and see each other's faces from across. The carpenter said, I think I understand the situation. I will be able to do a job that will please you. The elder brother had to go to town for supplies, so he helped the carpenter get the materials ready, and then he was off for the day. The carpenter worked hard all that day, measuring, sawing, nailing. At sunset, when the elder brother returned, the carpenter had just finished his job. The elder brother's eyes opened wide and his jaw dropped. It was not what he had even thought of or imagined. It was a bridge stretching from one side of the creek to the other. A fine piece of work, beautiful handrails. And to, his young, and to his surprise, his younger brother across the creek was coming to meet him with a big smile and arms open wide to hug him. You are really kind and humble, my brother. After all I had done to you and said to you, you still shown that blood relations can never be broken. I am truly sorry for my behavior, the younger brother said as he hugged his elder brother. 
they turn to see the carpenter hoist his toolbox on his shoulder. No, wait! Stay a few days! I have a lot of other projects for you, said the elder brother. I'd love to stay on, said the carpenter, but I have many more bridges to build. Jesus is a bridge builder. He says, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. He teaches the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. As a society, we generally reject this way of thinking. We have embraced the mantra of hating our enemies, dismissing them, cursing them. And it isn't even our enemies that we have adopted this attitude for. It's for people we have disagreements with, who see the world differently than we do, or hold different political beliefs. That somehow, if you aren't like me, or think like me, that somehow you are evil, or stupid, or worthy of hate and dismissal. It is easy to fall into this way of thinking. Jesus, though, is teaching about love and mercy to a world full of hate and vengeance. The world loves hate. We love to see people get what, they're, get what is coming to them, and we love to judge, and we love to condemn. We do not want to forgive or give to others. Compassion is seen as a sign of weakness, the world tells us. Except that's how Jesus saved the world. He was hated by people. He got what they thought was coming to him. He was judged and he was condemned. And in the face of all this, Jesus demonstrated God's love. He responded to hate with love. He responded to judgment by forgiving, including the man on the cross next to him who hurled insults at him. Jesus accepted his condemnation with forgiveness and mercy for those who do not know what they do. This is his lesson for us. This is what he was teaching the disciples and us. How do we react to the world? How do we react to hate, to judgment, to condemnation? What does it mean for us to show God's love to everyone? First, it means finding our common ground and recognizing the humanity of every person we interact with. Black, white, man, woman, rich, poor, American, foreigner, Democrat, Republican, we are all made in the image of God. And Jesus is teaching us to show love and compassion to all of them as if we were showing that love and compassion to ourselves. God's love has no bounds, and God's expectation is that our love for each other would have no bounds as well. I want to say this is not an open invitation for us to be taken advantage of endlessly, but the radical love of God is not fair, and we do take advantage of God. And showing God's love means that we may be taken advantage of sometimes. God knows we cannot live perfect lives, that we are sinners, and that we cannot help ourselves from sinning, but God still loves us, forgives us, and it is from that love and forgiveness that we learn and try to do better for the next time. But when it comes to our turn to show that love to others, our sinful nature shines for others to see. We want to protect ourselves, make sure we aren't being taken advantage of. That isn't what Jesus is teaching here. In fact, we are to give more than what people even ask for. Think of it like a grandmother feeding her family. You want some food? Here, let me fill your plate with more than you could hope to ever eat. God invites us to give what we have to others, be it individually, as a church, as a nation, to show love and mercy to those in need and to those who are hostile to us. Responding with violence and hate continues the cycle of violence and hate. Someone must stand up and say, enough, to have the courage to end the cycle. God intervened in human history some 2,000 years ago to teach us how to say, enough, to make sacrifices for one another, to care for one another, to provide for one another, to build bridges between us, 
and to do so indiscriminately of who or where or what the person who is asking has in their background. We won't always get it right, but this vision of the coming kingdom is a sign of God's love for us and how we can live out that love and have a little bit of the kingdom in this world, not having to wait for it in the next. But ultimately, the day will come when hate and judgment and condemnation will be no more. Bridges will be built between all people, and we will live in the presence of love forever. Amen. suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these in all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Let us give thanks for the word. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your Spirit, bless all who receive this word, that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be a light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, 
who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen.
Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.